Hi, so today we're going to make a do-it-yourself artist's easel. Um, I've just got some scrap wood uh, that I've had lying around. I bought a gate hinge and uh, a couple of um, bolts with loops on them. Cut myself two pieces of that um, timber. It's just, um, what's it, probably about 30 or 40 mil by about um, 20 mil or something. Uh, they're both 1.5 each, which should be long enough. And then I'm going to arrange them kind of like so. Um, so at the bottom here, I've got them uh, a width that I'm comfortable will be stable. And at the top here, I've just got them overlapping and I'm going to cut an angle on this side and an angle on the piece underneath so that they uh, they sit together against each other. Um, this easel will be able to fold up. So I want it to be able to fold up like this so that it can be transported and then open up so that it can be um, uh, put up. So if you if you look in here, I've got these two pieces so that they they meet about halfway through. So that's about halfway through that piece and about halfway through that piece there. And then if you we come down here, um, I'm going to mark it here so that I can see where I'm going to cut to and I'm going to go underneath like so and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut from that mark up to this middle mark that I made over here and I'm going to do the same on this if I just bring that mark up Right. Okay, so I've cut those as I marked them, and as you can see, they're going to fit together like that. And uh, when they fit together like that, the uh, front frame of the easel is going to be that appropriate width that I decided earlier so that it's nice and stable. Right, now the next step is we're going to get a small piece. Of timber and we're going to put it across across here close to the top we're going to put it on the back we're going to put two bolts through it that will allow this to fold like that um, to some degree That's just in there to hold it still. I've got that where I want it. I can clamp this, of course, or I can just hold it. As long as I don't drill through my finger. Right. So I don't really want these bolt heads sticking out, so I'm going to drill a slightly bigger hole so I can recess them in. Uh, I'm not going to drill that through. I'm just going to drill it very shallow just so that they will sit nice and... Um, flat uh, but I'm going to do that from the other side because this being this is now going to be the back so these bolts are actually going to come through this way like so and I don't mind if the nut is sitting there at the back but where I want the artwork to go uh, is on this face and um, I don't want that really sticking out. So I'm going to drill that in there and I'm going to do the same there. So 
Uh, there are a couple of different options here with respect to this. If you were using screw heads and they were countersunk, you just use a countersink bit to um, recess them in. Um, alternatively, you can use this uh, kind of special bit uh, which just drills out a flat hole. Um, it really should have been used before we put that hole in because it's going to move around now. Um, or the, the simplest thing is just to use a bit that's an appropriate size. But you've got to be careful with this because when it starts to drill, it's going to grab and want to go right through and you don't want that. Um, so we're just going to have to keep good control of it. So let's see how we go. So you saw how that suddenly grabbed and um, it's gone fairly deep, a little deeper than I wanted but it's going to be okay. So that's a bit better, that's a better depth and I've still got a decent amount of meat on there for the, the bolt to hold on to. Um, I might just take it in a tiny bit more. There we go, that's nice and flush. So another option uh, to just do that recess is to use a spade bit, um, which looks like that. Um, because it's got this sharp point which guides the bit, obviously you need to start by putting this in first and then drill the hole for the bolt to go through. Uh, that might have been a smarter way to do it. Okay, so one of the few things that I actually bought for this little project, um, a gate hinge, doesn't have to be a particularly big one or anything. Um, I'm only going to need one of them. And uh, so it's handy though to have, um, this is going to, our back leg will attach to here and this frame we've made here will attach to here. So we're going to flip this over. And we're going to <clears throat> attach that like that. The back leg will, will sit back like this. So I'm just going to screw that in there. With the screws provided. Right. So now we're going to see roughly how long we are going to need the back leg. Um, so I've got about 135 there. I'm going to cut a piece 140. Uh, I can always cut uh, that leg or any of these legs a little shorter or whatever later on, but it's much more difficult to add a piece. Um, so always better to be a bit longer. Right, that's on. Now we're going to need something across here for the like a shelf for the bottom of the painting to sit on. Um, I happen to have found uh, this piece of timber here which I have previously for some reason which I can't remember uh, routed a, a groove in there. Um, so that's going to work quite well for me. I'm just going to put that, I'm going to cut a piece of that and put it on like so, so the painting can sit in that groove. Um, another easy way to do this is to just get two pieces of wood that obviously be a bit thicker than this but if you just screw or glue one to the other like so um, and then attach it uh, screw it into there or bolt it into there then you've got your shelf for the artwork to sit on right so that's going to sit on there like that and you can see i've got that little groove 
for the painting to fit into. Um, so now what I'm going to do is, I'm just seeing what height we need this at. Uh, I'm going to put it at, at that height and you know that height will depend on where you're going to sit and how you're going to paint and so on. Um, so I'm not going to measure it, I'm just going to guess it and then I'll mark it and I'll measure both sides the same. Okay, so I held it up there, made my mark. Uh, that's about uh, 60 centimeters is 58. I'm going to make it 60 um, and I'll do that on both sides. So I've got another two of those random bolts from my spare bolt box. I've marked the 60 centimeters there. I've marked the 60 centimeters here. Um, I'm going to use the same drill bit. That's uh, eight and a half mil as I used before, um, just so these random bolts can go through um, and I'll have to find some um, some wing nuts for that so that it's easy to undo. Right, so I flipped it over. I'm going to make sure that that's nice and lined up and tight. Um, and I've slipped this other piece of timber with a groove in it underneath. That's actually going to sit like that um, and it's going to go underneath so let me move that now so you can see exactly what I'm talking about it will go like this underneath here that's the other side the other side is the front and we want the painting to slide into this little recess through there uh, that's our little shelf uh, again, just double check, make sure that's that's lined up and, and good, and then let's line up, um, let's line this up, hole with the timber underneath, centered on this piece of the timber over here, and then what we're going to do is drill through that. I'm going to drill a little bit, uh, so I can see where the hole is on both of them, and then I'll drill it through so I don't drill through my floor. But what we also want is we want this to be about the same distance sticking out on each side. So there I've got 14, yeah, you can't see that, uh, 14 and a half. That side's less. So if I shift this across a little, let's see, I think it's going to be, uh, it's about 12 and a half there. And on this side, we want it to be the same. Yeah, okay, that's good enough. Okay, so now we'll just make sure to line this up nicely and the same on this side. Okay, I'm just going to hold that nice and still. And the other side. Now we'll whip that out and we can see where we've got to drill our holes. Okay, so we'll drill them through now. Let's grab that little piece of wood. Another one. <laughs> right, so we've drilled our holes, um, and uh, as you can see, uh, they line up quite nicely there. What I've then done. Uh, is I've gone up 100 mil and drilled another hole on each side and another 100 mil and drilled another hole on each side. Now, as this moves up, obviously you need different holes to line up with those holes. Uh, so what I've done is I've used these first holes as a, as a guide to keep it centered correctly. And then uh, I've just lined up 
eyeballed it on both sides that, that those holes are the same position and then just marked it and drilled and marked and drilled on the other side and then I've gone up and done the same thing here and I've drilled those holes that now all lines up so let's for example if we use the middle one we can just pop that in there and on the other side the middle hole and there we go and we can tighten up our nut at the back now now I've not recessed these or anything because the painting is going to sit in there so that doesn't really affect the functionality of it a lot of people instead of using a these loops that I've used here, they might use a hook and have a chain, a little piece of lightweight chain or something like that. Um, so you can hook it on different parts of the chain, which makes it fairly adjustable. It might be uh, more flexible than what I've done here. Okay, let's get that painting. I'm not the artist, my wife is. There you are. So that will be f perfectly functional. Um, I might attach, might attach a little bit of a shelf underneath here coming out this way so she can put her paint and stuff on it. So here's that uh, little shelf, just a little piece of plywood that's just wide enough for her paint. Um, now, don't make this too wide because obviously it needs to be able to possibly fit up here. Um, and as the further up you go with those extra holes, the narrower the space is going to get. So I've just held it on, lined it up, uh, lined it up at the back underneath there, got it centered, and I've made my mark. Um, and I'll just pre drill some guard holes and then I'll screw that on there. It's not going to take anything heavy. Uh, it'll just take a little plastic paint dish. Okay, so I've got that lined up. I've got it clamped and I can just drill from underneath. Okay, so pre-drilled a couple of holes there. One there, there's one over here somewhere. There it is. Um, just to make sure the screws go in the right place, I'm just going to screw that in and then I'll just neaten up that edge. Um, I can cut this off um to neaten it up and uh of course we can give it a coat of paint so there's my little shelf um i put a fair few screws in there you can probably see there's five in there uh that just to give it a little bit of rigidity um as you can see it's holding fairly well if anything it's twisting this timber a little bit but that's just very light what's going to go on there um, just a little plastic tray with different colors and um, that's about it um, I mean it's fairly basic it's fairly easy to do um, but it can easily be um, folded up just Untie the string, remove this piece, and the two, these two front legs will fold together, the back one folds in, off you go. Set it up somewhere else.